Today we're going to start out by talking about how things like food and water and minerals are transported through our plants. And we're going to start out by talking about our soil. And you have about 95% of the plant's dry weight, which means without water, is going to be carbon and hydrogen and oxygen. And the primary nutrients are carbon dioxide and water because that's what they need for photosynthesis. Now, a nutrient is considered essential if it has an identifiable role. And there's not another nutrient that can substitute for it. And if you don't, they don't have enough of this nutrient, then they're going to die. Um, the plants need these nutrients to be absorbed as minerals by the roots. And macro means large, so we need these nutrients, macronutrients, in large amounts. Micro is small, so the micronutrients are only needed in small amounts. Um, the ben but they're all beneficial because um, the plant needs them in some amount. Now, how is so soil excuse me, formed? It starts with the weathering of the rock, <coughs> excuse me, where the rock is broken down into rubble and then into soil particles. And organisms play a very important role in soil formation. Lichens and mosses, for instance, grow on rocks and trap particles that later allow grasses and herbs and soil animals to get established there, and then when they die, their remains are decomposed by bacteria and fungi. Humus begins to accumulate, and this is going to supply nutrients to the plants, and it's just decaying organic matter. So under ideal conditions, a centimeter of soil may take 15 years to develop. Now, what is soil? It's a mixture of different things like mineral particles, decaying organic material, living organisms, air and water. And roots take up oxygen from air spaces around them. And our soil that are in the soil, um, we got a mixture of three types of particles in our soil. Sand is the largest, and it has large spaces in it, so water drains well. Clay doesn't have many spaces. They're very small, so they fill up with water. It's more dense. And then silt is kind of a mid-size. And you also have loam, um, which is basically a third sand, a third clay, and a third silt. And it retains water well, and it allows drainage, and it's very productive. So this is showing you um, a soil-type pyramid. And you can see you've got the percentage of clay, the percentage of silt, and the percentage of sand to produce all these different types of soil. Now, we know our soil absorbs water and minerals. And to do this, you've got negatively charged particles, clay particles, that bind to positively charged minerals like calcium and potassium. And the plants extract these minerals uh, by exchanging hydrogen ions for, from them. This is a soil profile. It's a vertical section that's showing from the ground surface to the rock that's way down below. And you can see that you've got um, topsoil at the top um, in letter A. This is going to be your litter and humus. B is your subsoil, which is inorganic nutrients. C is your weathered rock. And it's going to vary in different ecosystems because of different temperature and precipitation. Climates vary in different ecosystems. Soil erosion happens when wind or water carries soil away to a new place. And we worldwide, 
Just erosion removes about 25 billion tons of topsoil each year. What causes this? Deforestation, removing trees. Increasing the number of deserts we have because of overgrazing and over farming. And then poor farming practices as well cause this.